This is where we find ENC senior reporter Aisha Ismail, uh, of course, standing by for us. And Aisha, uh, good morning once again to, to you, colleague. I mean, from where you stand, how's it looking? Because it seems from Johannesburg, at least where Heidi Jockers is, uh, the glitch hasn't been resolved. Beneficiaries are still uh, reeling uh, with, uh, without their grant, saying government needs to attend to them quite urgently. Tumala, it's a sad situation. I've spoken to several old people, pensioners, saying that they have been coming to the post office, going to the auto bank, going to um, retail stores to go and try and draw their money. They went on the 5th, the 6th, the 7th. <coughs> we know today is the 14th. They've still not received any money. And every time they're told to come back and they go to the post office and they are disappointed. But I'm now joined by a pensioner here uh, from an area called Chatsworth here in Marmesbury and her name is Sarah. You were telling me earlier that you've been to this very post office multiple times. You've just come out of here now. What have you been told? They told me the same story that they told me last week and they told me that uh, I mustn't go anymore to the ATMs or to any retail so I must come to them. But for me to come out of Chatswood it cost me 50 rand and if I don't have the money I must go in my area where there's an ATM to go get the money. But you know the saddest part of this whole thing is, is the fact that yes we know we are living in poverty and we don't need to be treated by our government like poverty because it's sad to see even the people from the farm, the elders people have to come to town to get their money because on the farm there's no ATM. And the saddest part also about this thing is that they don't care what we are eating, what we are drinking or what happened to us. And I have to go to money lenders and to shops to go sign there and go borrow money. Then I have to pay on that money. I have to pay another amount of money because I lend by their money. And for me, it's sad to see that as citizens of South Africa, we have to go through all this. And at the end of the day, I feel I want to tell the minister with all due respect of social development, such a, I want to tell us he must come and stay in our area and come and see how we are suffering because it's frustrating and I'm angry because I'm also hungry. I also need to take my medication. But if I don't have food to eat, how I'm going to get, uh, uh, if I don't get my money, how I'm going to get money to buy food and do what I must do in terms of the Sasa money. Is this the only income that you get every month? Mm -hmm. This is the only income that I have. I don't work. I don't have nothing. It's only the Sasa money that I'm living on. Thank you so much for your time, Mum. And that was Sarah Faby talking to us about her plight and what she's been going through and saying that every time she comes from Chatsworth into Marmesbury, she has to pay 50 rand to come to the post office or to a retail um, store to find out whether there is money. She was also saying earlier to me when we were speaking off camera that some of her neighbors, they've gone to the ATM and some of them got a thousand rand, some of them got 61 rand, when they are actually entitled to get 2,080 rand. And she's saying that they're getting absolutely no explanation as to when the problem is going to be resolved. And what's sad to Miller is that we heard now from Sarah Faby saying that she has to go and borrow money. She has to go to money lenders. And when she eventually gets her pension, she's going to have to repay that money that she borrowed with interest. Some woman was telling, another woman was telling me earlier that she was told by the post office that they may only get the balance of the money next month. So what do people do in the meantime? How are people expected to eat? And coupled with that, they say when they go to the post office, they could get there at a time when it's load shedding, and then they still have to wait for two to three hours to find out whether they're going to get their money. But right now, as I'm talking to you, there are thousands of people still waiting to get their grant money, money that they depend on from the state and this is often the only income that they get every month yeah and we've definitely heard Aisha from you know uh, activists human rights activists uh, saying that it's a constitutional obligation that needs to be maintained when we're hearing from you know the uh, most vulnerable saying they have to now borrow money this is usually unsecured loans uh, you know they have to pay them back with interest we know how it goes with these types of loans at times your ID book is confiscated from you
until you make that payment. So with the little that you eventually get, uh, you have to pay that loan back. If you fail, then you may have some of your items confiscated, which is really a rippling, you know, cycle effect. But we'll keep an eye on this because we do expect, of course, the Minister, uh, Lindy Wezulu, just to give us clarity on what exactly is happening and how they will resolve the system glitch. Aisha Ishmael, I'll leave it there, colleague, and thanks so much for bringing us another perspective out in Malmesbury on how uh, this lack of, you know, adequate and timeliest, you know, grant payments is actually negatively impacting on those beneficiaries around the country.